Welcome to the College of Knowledge. This time, what do you see? Tech models. An award-winning cybercrime and cybersecurity entrepreneur and strategist with over 13 years of experience consulting in the private and public sectors. Here is Cade Zavanjanja. Hello, everyone. Uh, in 2018, Zimbabwe, we did transactions close to $100 billion. Yes, Zimbabwe. And with $100 billion, that means approximately we're transacting close to $300 million per day. So if that man was, as Doc has said, and the statistics have shown, 85% of that is transacted on online platforms. If it's down for a day with a potential transactional revenue, people to people, business to people, people to business, enterprise to companies, whatever you may call it, of potentially $300 million that are still in one is to one US and bonds then. So that means with the current prevailing rates, that could go four or five times the current traffic which is happening. Ladies and gentlemen, my story is simple. In 20, 2007, got to the university, 2006, 2007, supposed to be a medical student, and I was given a soil science degree. A doctor, now working with soils, not people. I was frustrated and were told, you'll be transferred, so forth, so forth, after you've enrolled, so forth, so forth. That's another story. But also the investing, I was bored. But what I saw, my lecturers were professors, experts in their fields, were doctors. My teaching assistants were either master students or PhD students. And here we were. But for me, I didn't see lecturers. I saw potential employees. What did I start to do? <clears throat> because of the pool of that university, a local university, many departments would get each and every expert you need. So I created a consultant company. Using their CVs, using their platforms. Started doing tenderings for jobs. So I'd get a job there. They'll go and do the job, I'll pay them, and next day we'll meet in the class. <laughs> Why? As a startup, we couldn't afford to have PhD holders, professors, to employ them full time. But they had in mind what we needed was access to the wisdom, access to the knowledge, and we take that knowledge and access to the market. Ladies and gentlemen, my presentation is very simple. What do you see? Because what you see pronounces your perspective. And your perspective pronounces your position. And your position pronounces your practices. When you look at that slide, if you look at Uber, it's the biggest tax company in the world. It owns no tax. If you look at A&B, it's the biggest hotel chain in the world. In terms of the number of hotels, in terms of revenue, it owns no single hotel. If you look at Fresh in the Box, I can assume by now it's one of the biggest agriculture dealers where it owns no single centimeter, to say, of agri agriculture land. eBay. Should we go there? Yes, let's go there. It's the biggest retail in the world. It owns no single shop. No single shop. Let's look at WeWork. It's the biggest supplier of commercial properties in the world. 
he doesn't own maybe a lease agreement, or maybe a property of its own. So what are we seeing? Things have changed. Companies are moving from ownership to access. Where you needed to own a fleet of vehicles, now you do not necessarily have to. You need to have access to a fleet of vehicles. Where you necessarily had to create your own content, you don't have to. Let's look at Facebook. It's the biggest content aggregator in the world. It creates no content. We create, them for, create the content for them. Netflix is the biggest movie house. But it owns no production company. So firstly, aggregates the production. Second level of aggregation which is happening is aggregation of consumption. Look at Uber. Look at Via. And it's not a new phenomenon. It started not in Africa. You see, I, personally I think one of the most abuses in Africa is to be seated in that small thing when you're 18 people. <laughs> that that, that ride-sharing ride thing we call combis in Africa. Uh, um, but it's a great business model in sharing economy. Moving from there, aggregation of finance. Doug was talking of Bitcoin. The blockchain has brought many disruptions to the market. Blockchain, as it said, or Bitcoin, is not governed by any government but any central bank is governed by trust between the people. Even the owner who wrote the initial Bitcoin paper, Kishmot, is actually not known who is he. So you find the aggregation of finance, what's happening, whereby it started here when our mothers long ago who say, okay, we want to buy place at the end. Let's put money together. And now you're seeing education, aggregating. Look at our uh, 14, 16 universities. You do not need to start a university, but aggregate the programs which they are offering and offer become one of the biggest universities in Zimbabwe, just by a click of a button. What's happening? Long ago, people were just passive consumers. But nowadays, your client is your creator, your content creator. Your client is your collaborator. Your client is your financier. Your client is giving you the product. Your client is giving you the channel to your market. What does that matter to entrepreneurs? If you want to evolve and if you want to take your shape in this market, you can't compete with the giants which have been there for the last 100 years. You can't compete with the billion dollar companies uh, with bonds which are there currently if you use the same business models which they use. But what is it that you need to do currently is to look at what they are doing, look at what they are not doing and break it down to access. What is it that I can access within the current set system? For instance, we gave example of Uber. We, gave, we can give example of wind. We can give example of fresh in the box. I don't need to farm. I don't need to own a taxi. But I can make more money from those things than the owners. And one thing which is also happening, you find corporates themselves, instead of rolling on the traditional models, let's look at telecoms, you find the introduction of OTT that is over the top services, whereby they are now becoming one of the most earners of those companies. Let's look at uh, Econet. They built their infrastructure, spend a lot of money in there. But now it's saying, okay, we have the core infrastructure, but how now do we get access to the other markets, which would not necessarily be a core business? They now have <coughs> Via. They now have EcoCash. They now have yeah, they now have a, a booking company. They now have zero. All those things. All those things, what they are simply doing is 
aggregating the numbers which they have and getting access from that and giving a service. What are the key benefits and what are the key drivers? The people are already there. It says the so-called millenniums, Generation X, Generation Z, they are not interested in much. They are interested in the click of a button, the likes, the shares. So whatever they see, <clears throat> if you look at Amazon, they have now that, uh, that shopping cart, whereby if you just see something that you like, it's instant shopping. They no longer ask for your information and so forth. Click shop, it deducts. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> if it, mm, mm, I like the suit, shop, did that. I like the shoes, shop, did that. So, by the time, uh, <laughs> why? Because they have discovered that each and every pixel on the Amazon website is really stating a lot of money. They can't waste a pixel. Everything there is intentional. Everything, everything, even the font, is intentional that you click and pay. So what we find is we started with the pre-internet stage, we went to the internet stage, and now we are talking of internet of everything, whereby smart watches, smart wives, smart husbands, smart shares, everything is now connected together. When everything is connected together, we're not talking of the internet of things ecosystem. This ecosystem, you find everything, banking, finance, retail, <coughs> healthcare, are now connected together. But when these things are connected together, it brings a lot of dynamics. One of the key dynamics which comes with it is the issue of security. Because these companies, usually the unicorns, they do not own the actual traditional assets. Are we together there? When they do not own the actual traditional assets, they are getting valuations starting Series A fundraising, a billion dollars. Okay, Yuba, show us your assets. We don't have. So what happens now with these models? Once something wrong happens on their core infrastructure, they usually either collapse. It has been shown 60% of the companies within this uh, trend that are attacked within six months, they close down. Why? They do not have the core asset base. And their valuations is not dependent on saying, okay, how many buildings do we have, so forth. No. It's depending upon how much they are raising and how much investors are willing to push within Silicon Valley. To the extent that when you are talking of the unicorns, these are companies which are evalu evaluated a billion dollar plus. We are talking of US, by the way. <laughs> and we are now talking of Decacons. These are companies who are evaluated 10 billion, a startup without assets. <laughs> yeah, my fellow accountants here yeah, seem to okay. <laughs> without assets. So what happens now? Look at Facebook, US elections. When Facebook had the Cambridge Analytic problem, within a day, it lost over 10% of the valuation. Within a single day. Within a single day. Why? The valuation is not based mostly on the core assets, traditional assets, but it's based on the access they are giving. So what you see here is, <clears throat> years ago, 2016, Exxon, Total, Citibank were the leading companies in valuation, 276 billion. Come to 2016, the leading companies in valuation, Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon. <clears throat> what is it happening? The trillion dollar race. We now have companies within the trillion dollars without real tangible assets. But they are valued Okay, when you talk trillion dollars, every Zimbabwean at some point were trillion years. This is trillion dollar US dollars, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So these companies, <clears throat> if something happens today, within a fraction of 30 minutes, they can lose close to 10, up to 30% of their current valuations. Why, if you go to Facebook, Let's talk of Netflix. If Netflix data centers are down, they have nothing to do. If Uber data center is down, no ride sharing. If Facebook is down, no ride sharing. So ladies and gentlemen, whatever you are seeing within the market, look at how you can disrupt 
by getting access rather than ownership. Look at the current existing markets. Gain access more than ownership. Why? Access is cheaper, access is readily available, and access belongs to you and the client. Make your client be part of the product. It's usually said, if you do not pay for it, you're usually the product. Ladies and gentlemen, change your perspective, change your position, and change your practices. Thank you.